Marrakesh, an explosion of vibes, tastes and feelings. A vibrant city that will impress you and then leave you speechless. A city that will activate all your feelings. In this video, I will walk you through all the important attractions you must visit, great places to eat and drink, share tips and tricks, possible scams to avoid and much more. This is the most complex Marrakesh travel video you'll find on the internet, so don't search no more, watch all the movie, enjoy and be sure to subscribe to my channel. Usually the first place you'll visit is Marrakesh Menara Airport. Here we bought a SIM card with internet for 10 GB with 10 Euro from Envy. Our recommendation is to have available Euros or Dollars to change. As we wanted to avoid the harassment of taxi drivers, we opted for a pre-booked private transfer for 20 Euros. At the Riyadh, Rashid welcomed us with a delicious cup of minty and sweets. More about staying in a Riyadh later in the video. Today we are in Marrakesh and we are starting this video here in Jama Elf now. Jama means together, so let's explore this great city. The mosque was founded in 1147, right after Marrakesh was conquered from the Almoravids. Right near Jema Elvna, it's a Kotubia Mosque and it's the oldest mosque in Marrakesh. Over time, the mosque design inspired important buildings all over the world and today it's a symbol of Marrakesh. Kutubia Gardens are right near the mosque and it is a great place to admire the colorful orange trees and the beautiful flowers. So here in Marrakesh everyone wants to help, they want to show directions, they want to come with you and show everything that uh, you want to discover. But be careful, there are a lot of scams, they can... Um, tell you that they will want to show you uh, the attraction you want to visit and uh, come with you and uh, then they will ask you money and they can be really rude so uh, definitely be careful Babagnoa is one of the best known gates of Marrakesh the gate was the main public entrance to the royal citadel in the southern part of Medina. Kashbach Mosque, or also known as the Mosque of Mulai Al Yazid, was inscribed as a UNESCO World Heritage Site in 1985 as part of Medina of Marrakesh. The indoor visit is forbidden for the non muslim same as for Kotubia Mosque. I think it's pretty obvious why Marrakesh is called the Red City. Look a bit around. Place des Ferbantliers was the connection between Islamic and Jewish quarters. The name means Iron Workers Square, so there are a lot of shops around selling decorative iron goods like lamps or bed frames. Right in the Place des Ferbantliers, you'll find the Place des Savour restaurant. It was the first time we've met the local cuisine. We didn't think twice and we've ordered the famous tagine. We were fascinated by the serving, as the tagine is usually served in a cone-shaped cooking vessel traditionally used in Morocco. El Badi Palace, also frequently translated as the Incomparable Palace, is one of the 99 names of God in Islam. Today is a ruined palace that was one of our favorite attractions to visit. Let's start with a bit of history. El Badi Palace was built at the end of the 16th century by the Sultan Ahmed al Masur to commemorate the victory of the Battle of the Three Kings against the Portuguese. Since it's currently a ruined palace, we have to trust the enormous size of the patio and historians to get an idea of how it was when it had been just constructed. 
Palace Badi is a ruined city here in Marrakesh and you can visit it with 7 euro, it is worth it, we really enjoy it here. It is said that the incomparable was a palace with over 300 rooms decorated in gold, turquoise and crystal. The palace decorated with materials imported from numerous countries ranging from Italy to Mali was used for receptions and designed to showcase the Sultan's wealth and power. Marrakesh is also known by its immense doors. The palace was neglected after al Masur's death in 1603. Its valuable materials, especially marble, were striped away and reused in other buildings across Morocco. If you decide to visit El Badi, don't forget to climb the walls to have one of the best views of Marrakesh. If you enjoyed visiting the Roman Forum in Rome or dream of going to the Acropolis in Athens, you'll definitely enjoy El Badi Palace. Today, it is a major tourist attraction in Marrakesh as well as an exhibition space. As a first tip here, please buy the ticket online, mandatory one day in advance so that you'll avoid the large queues in front of the garden. We didn't know that, so we've spent around 30 minutes in line for buying our way in. The Majorelle Garden is basically a botanical garden which was created by the French orientalist artist Jacques Majorelle over almost 40 years. He started in 1923 and also features a cubist villa designed by the French architect Paul Sinoir in the 1930s. Jacques Majorelle used to say, the painter has the modesty to regard this enclosure of floral verdure as his most beautiful work. He referred to the garden as vast splendors whose harmony I have orchestrated. This garden is a momentous task, to which I give myself entirely. It will take my last years from me and I will fall exhausted under its branches after having given it all my love." End quote. The property was the residence of the artist and his wife from 1923 until their divorce in the 1950s. He acquired hundreds of rare varieties of trees and plants, such as cacti, palm trees, bamboo, coconut palms, tuyas, carob trees, yasmin, agaves, white water lilies, datura, cypress, and so on. In the 1980s, the property was purchased by the fashion designers Yves Saint Laurent and Pierre Berge, who worked to restore it. The pair owned the villa until 2008. After a long walk through this spectacular garden, enjoy a delicious coffee or an energizing snack at Café Majorelle. You'll be surprised how this coffee shop was lovely placed in the center of the gardens. The gardens attract more than 700,000 visitors annually. The wide French-era streets of Guelize are home to upscale Moroccan and European restaurants, cabarets and chic bars, as well as art galleries and mainstream fashion stores. I couldn't believe my eyes how different this area was compared with the old Medina. You will find here a completely new face of Marrakesh. I was excited to try one of the restaurants of Guelis, but eventually ended up enjoying a tagine here in Marrakesh. It's with olives and chicken, traditional cuisine. La Bahia, which means the beautiful, is an 8,000 square meter floor-to-ceiling extravagance of intricate marquetry, plasterwork and zoa, which means painted wood, certainly one of Marrakesh's most eye-popping sights. The salons of both the Petit Riad and Grand Riad are pretty awesome, but the Cour d'Honneur, a grand courtyard with its 1,500 square meter floor of Italian Carrara marble, is the unique, undisputed highlight. Despite the vast area on show, only a portion of the palace's 8 hectares and 150 rooms is open to the public. 
Palace Bahia it's an explosion of colors. Its grand spaces sometimes play host to important cultural events. Let's go a bit through its history. Built by Grand Vizier Simosa in the 1860s, the palace was later expanded and embellished from 1894 to 1900 by his son and successor Abu Bu Ahmed. The courtyard was converted into a harem by Bu Ahmed after he became Grand Vizier in 1894. Indeed, the expansion and beautification of Bahia Palace was driven by Bu Ahmed's desire to accommodate his four wives and 24 concubines. Bu Ahmed died in 1900 and in 1908 the palace charms attracted warlord Pasha Glaoy. When Morocco gained independence from France in 1956 the palace was used as a royal residence until King Hassan II transferred it to the custody of Moroccan Ministry of Culture so the building could serve as a cultural icon and tourist attraction. While you're in Marrakesh, definitely you need to have a lunch or a dinner here with the panoramic view of Gemma El Khmer. The food here was delicious. We've eaten royal salad, stick chicken with french fries and already famous tagine, but this time served with plums. And the view towards Gemma El Fna and the city simply breathtaking. Riyadh's Pala Rose d'Orient was a very cozy place where we always felt safe and welcomed thanks to our friend Rashid, which is literally an amazing host. That was our room. We had a lovely terrace. Each day we ate breakfast uh, right over there. Enjoying a lovely breakfast here on the top of the terrace with this amazing view. and we enjoyed uh, mint tea right on these tables with the view of uh, Kutubia Mosque and all the city we definitely recommend this accommodation we spent some sun time here in the Riyadh and now it's time to have some fun time in Marrakesh our Riyadh is really nice uh, but it's a, a bit far from Medina and uh, you're gonna experience with us uh, our walk until Medina and we will discover if Marrakesh is safe and if we are allowed to film so uh, definitely you need to stay with us until the end of this video It's our third day here in Marrakesh and we are getting used with this atmosphere. We are now going to Le Jardin Secret and then we will go to Medina where my girlfriend will buy some uh, nice purses. So let's see her techniques in negotiating with the locals. We are now at Le Jardin Secret and it's pretty incredible as this garden is in the middle of Medina. It's a, a really nice experience and uh, definitely it's a must. Listen to these incredible birds. Le Jardin Secret hosts two gardens, an Islamic garden and an exotic garden and this was the oldest Riyadh in the Medina. There are plants from five continents here in these exotic and Islamic gardens.
this garden in the center of Medina, it's an opposite to what's happening in the center of Marrakesh. It is really crowded there, but here it's so quiet and so relaxing, I could stay here all day. For sure, another lovely and relaxing attraction that you must see while being lost in the old Medina. Amateurs of nature will simply love this place. There is also a terrace viewpoint with a nice restaurant where you can enjoy a superb upper view of this secret garden and the city. Our recommendation is uh, that wherever is your Riyadh, you should come to Gemma Elvna and from here you will go to the attractions you want to visit. Right from the beginning we were impressed of these magnificent views and here we are going to taste some Moroccan patisseries and together with the traditional coffee. I definitely recommend you to come here, we love it. After eating traditional food and visiting everything that is to visit in the city, what's left to do? You're right, shopping! My lovely girlfriend needs a new purse. She plans to use her negotiation techniques to get the best price. Let's see what happens. So my girlfriend just bought a nice purse, she negotiated it, uh, what was the deal? Yeah, so uh, basically he said that I would buy it for 75 dirhams, which is 7.5 euros and we negotiated and the final price was 50 which means 5 euros oh my god yeah. you're so great you're <laughs> the best girlfriend ever yeah that was my my offer and he took it i'm good she i got the skills negotiation skills <laughs> i got the skills from now on you will negotiate everything <laughs> so i have a nice bag and they said that it's manual created with raffia straight from marrakesh very nice. I love it. There is no visit in Marrakesh without having a delicious tagine. This tagine was a both tagine. Last but not least, Marrakesh Museum, a historic palace and museum, did surprise us. Initially we were considering skipping it due to lack of time, but we found some free time in our last day. We were so impressed of this museum, placing it directly into our top things to not miss in Marrakesh. I was so fascinated of the interior decoration and architecture that I was almost always filming or taking pictures. In addition to its notable architecture, the museum's collection showcases various historic art objects and contemporary art from Morocco. The palace is an example of late 19th century and early 20th century Moroccan architecture, one of many such palaces built by wealthy elites during this period. If I would have the chance to film a movie in Marrakesh, here would be the scene location. Together with my charming lady, had a lot of fun here and we couldn't get enough of this place. At the end of the visit, we were delighted and decided to spread the beauty of this incredible place. Can somebody hear me? If I get 1000 likes on this video, I will be saved. We are ending our trip here in Marrakesh for five days, it was awesome. Initially we were a bit scared, but uh, then we got used to it and now we are like the locals 
everyone is friendly and uh, we had awesome time here I really hope that you like this video and you will find it useful and use it for your trip this is travel and tell no one subscribe now and see you in the next one